Modern day cities are formed when millions of people come together. People have always felt the need for rules and regulations in order to guarantee their peace and security. It would be impossible to do that without them. Another fact about the modern life of society is individualism. Each individual in a society has his own aims and plans. Most individuals put their interests before anything else. The interests of society and other people come after those. That selfish morality means there are poor, hungry and homeless people all over the world. Let us now imagine an enormous city. Imagine hundreds of thousands of individuals living in it, yet no one considers his own interests. On the contrary, they put the interests of society and others first. Imagine everyone working with great self-sacrifice, with no terrible urge to be first. Imagine there is no conflict there. Such a society probably goes beyond the bounds of human imagining. Yet such a society does really exist on the earth. And what is more, just about everywhere on it. The living things that constitute that miraculous society are ants. live in colonies of hundreds of thousands and even millions of individuals. Every one in the colony carries out its responsibilities to the full. No one creates any problems over its position or job. The important thing is the survival of the colony of which it is a part. To that end, each one will give up its life if necessary. It is impossible to find one hungry or homeless individual. That is because there is an enormous cooperation, harmony and sharing between them. As you can see, even a single drop of water is shared. Foodstuffs are collected and stored in the nest to be shared out again. There is absolutely no selfishness among ants. Not one is at a loose end. Each one is part of a giant organization. Each one is devoted to the part of the organization outside itself. With their social life and social organization so superior to that of man, ants are all proof of God's art of creation. Let us now consider a few species of ant, and together see the miracles of creation manifested in these tiny creatures. We are in the rainforests of Australia. These trees host one of the best organized colonies in the world, weaver ants. Just six millimeters long, weaver ants build their own nests.
Nest construction takes place thanks to miraculous cooperation. The principal materials used are leaves. The first stage is to bring all leaves together so that they can be joined. Weaver ants cling to each other and form a living chain to do this. Then they pull the other end of the leaf towards them. Here is where the most surprising technique is employed. The worker ant you are watching is carrying a larva, its as yet unborn sister. It takes it to the exact spot where the leaves will be stuck together. The larva immediately starts to produce a sticky thread. As we can see, the worker ant weaves this tiny glue gun between the leaves and stitches them together. Adult ants are unable to produce the thread used as glue. The tiny larva gives up all the thread it needs for itself for the good of the colony. It is thus unable to complete its development and become a normal adult. Yet that sacrifice does not go unrewarded. The worker ants will care for it in the nest until the end of its life. Stitching the leaves calls for enormous cooperation. That is why some workers operate on the inside and others on the outside. That allows the leaves to be joined together in the strongest possible way. The structures that then emerge are miracles of engineering from the point of view of building technology, strength and ease of use. Ants feel no need for any supervision or management, but miraculously know at what spots the leaves are to be clamped together and what places they must pass the thread through. That is why scientists describe the way these tiny creatures act like a single brain as a miracle. These small creatures have no powers of reason and no leader telling them what to do. Yet they act together in one single purpose with the most intelligent plan which shows there is a will that guides and rules them. That is God's domination over living things. In the Quran, God says, It is God who created the seven heavens, and of the earth the same number, the command descending down through all of them, so that you might know that God has power over all things, and that God encompasses all things in His knowledge. Research into the organization of ants has shown scientists a number of remarkable facts. They have seen astounding behavior displayed by ants studied in laboratories. For example, when their nests need to be strengthened, ants have started to construct a wall, known as a retaining wall in construction technology, at the entrance to the nest. This serves to increase the resistance of the structures. Each ant has carried grains of sand, the equivalent of huge rocks when one considers their own size, to where the wall is to be set up. Miraculously, each one has acted both like a construction worker and an engineer who knows the blueprint for the wall, has put the stones in exactly the right place, and thus erected the wall.
Human beings have engaged in agriculture for thousands of years, and that is how much of the world's food needs are met. People use different techniques to make their agriculture productive. Scientists have developed techniques such as crop spraying and chemical fertilizers to increase production. They have also managed to raise crops all year round by means of greenhouses. Yet, there is another creature which has been engaging in agriculture and employing these techniques for even longer. In order to get to know it close up, let us travel to the depths of the Amazonian rainforest. These are leafcutter ants. They have been agriculturalists for millions of years. They perform this difficult job by stages, thanks to an incomparable division of labor and planning. The first link in the production chain are the worker ants that serve outside the nest. These ants work non-stop day and night, cutting leaves from trees and wild plants growing in the forest. The second job is carrying the leaves they have cut back to the nest. These tiny workers are stronger than one can possibly imagine. To make a comparison, what these ants do is the equivalent of a man running one kilometer in 2.5 minutes with a 250 kilogram load on his back. No human being could ever do that. Ants work in an astoundingly planned and organized manner. They have to carry leaves to their nest to carry out agriculture. That is why that job has to be done with no interruptions. Ants build multi-track highways to make transportation easier. Even more interesting, there is an organization responsible for the maintenance and repair of that road system, just like we have. This ant is clearing obstacles from the line. This is another road maintenance worker. The organization exhibited by ants contains features that go far beyond any human imagining. You are now watching ants which have made a bridge by holding on to one another. The other ants walk over them and carry on their way. There is no doubt that this is a sign of great sacrifice and cooperation. Some 500,000 ants act like a single brain while all this is going on. This giant organization is capable of stripping all the leaves from a large tree in a single day. Ants tirelessly cut all kinds of plants, even flowers.
When one compares the size of ants to that of human beings, the thickness and length of the leaves they cut down are the equivalent of heavy planks or even a tree trunk. We use special equipment to cut down trees. So how do the ants manage this? The answer to that again reveals a miracle of creation. God has endowed the ant with a cutting mechanism that is a true miracle of design. The cutting mechanism consists of two separate blades. The blades are coated with zinc to make them extra sharp. The cutting mechanism possesses an astounding system. A special organ under the ant's head gives off high-frequency sound waves. These are forwarded by the blades to the leaf and make it more brittle and easily cut. The design in that system is quite ingenious. Let us now consider the structure of that system. Covering metal blades with alloys to make them sharper is a method used by human beings. But the people who do that possess intelligence and reason, and the system was developed as a result of special research in laboratories. Yet ants have no idea that a material known as zinc even exists. Neither do they know their blades are coated with it. Cells in the ant's cutting mechanism miraculously coat the blades with zinc. There is a highly intelligent design in these little creatures' bodies. The same thing applies to the system that makes the leaves easily cut by means of sound waves. The ant can have absolutely no idea that high frequencies make things more brittle. Neither is there any doubt that such a complex system cannot have come about by chance. There is only one explanation for the existence of such a perfect system. The system was consciously created. Ants were brought into being by God, and the cutting mechanism and all their other features were given them by Him. That is stated in a verse from the Quran. My Lord encompasses all things in His knowledge, so will you not pay heed. Leafcutter ants' nests can be as much as five meters underground and seven meters wide. They build hundreds of tunnels and chambers within the nest and dig and carry out some 40 tons of earth. The architecture of the nest is another miracle of its own. The ants do not eat the leaves they have cut off the trees because they feed only on a special kind of fungus. So what do the ants use those leaves for if they do not eat them? The answer is most interesting. 
They use them as the raw material for agriculture. They grow that fungus by means of that raw material. To that end, they set up hundreds of fungus farms inside the nest. You are now looking at one of those farms. The temperature, humidity and size of the farms are all carefully regulated by the ants in order to grow the fungus. Just like the greenhouses that we use to grow plants all year round. The worker ants hand the leaves they cut over to other ants that work in the farms. The ants which receive them disinfect the leaves before they start working. There is an important reason for this. The entrance into the nest of foreign fungus or even bacteria could cause terrible damage. That could mean an epidemic in a colony of some 500,000 ants. Yet God has created a very special system to protect them. A substance with antiseptic properties is secreted from the ants' bodies. The ant you are watching is disinfecting the surface of the leaf with its mouth. As a result of this process, no bacteria will be left on it. Just like us, ants also fight bacteria. Antibiotics are manufactured in laboratories for this purpose. Yet the antibiotic produced by the ants is much more powerful and they have been using it for millions of years. Of course, these tiny creatures are unaware of bacteria and antibiotic substances that prevent bacteria from multiplying. Yet thanks to this perfect system that God has created, not one bacterium is to be found either on the ant's body nor in the nest it lives in. After finishing the disinfecting process, the ants then begin to cut the leaves up together. After cutting the leaves up into small pieces, it is then the turn of the very smallest ants to begin work. These ants are just two millimeters across, the size of a grain of sand. They spend their entire lives in these small underground chambers. They chew the leaves up into a pulp and spread it on the floor of the production area, making a bed of fertilizer upon which fungus is grown. Within 24 hours, the leaves have entirely lost their green color. By the next day, the surface is entirely covered with white fungus. The harvesting begins at once. The ants that perform the harvesting think of their colleagues, not themselves. They carry the fungus they cut off the harvesting chambers to the worker ants. Here, a harvester ant is offering the nutritious liquid it has obtained from the fungus to a worker ant employed elsewhere in the nest. By these methods, all the ants' food needs are met, from the leaf cutters outside the nest to those that chew the leaves into pulp. Five hundred thousand ants work continuously in the most perfect harmony and cooperation. After all the fungus have been harvested, 
Only the remains of the leaves are left, and these need to be cleaned up. Workers carry out every little bit and leave the production chambers spotless. The leftovers are thrown away some distance from the nest. These hardworking creatures have no concept of rest or complaint. The colony also contains other ants with other duties. The defense of the nest is the duty of powerful, brave, and devoted soldier ants. The soldiers rush out, even at the sound of an approaching human footfall. Some giant soldiers are 300 times heavier than the other ants in the colony. They attack any intruder near the nest. They even bite the shoes and socks of anyone who approaches the nest. Once their jaws are in the flesh of any intruder, they never let go. They do not open their jaws even if other parts of their bodies are damaged, and they give up their own lives for the sake of the colony. There is no doubt that this is an example of great self-sacrifice. The leafcutter ants' worst enemies are wasps. Thanks to its powerful jaws, an ant can easily do battle with a wasp. Yet as their jaws are used to hold the leaf as they are carrying it, they are defenseless against the sudden attack at that moment. So how is an ant carrying a leaf protected? The answer to that question again reveals a tremendous cooperation in the colony. Let us have a closer look at the carrier ants. If you look carefully, you will see another worker ant on each leaf. These workers' job is to protect the carrier ants from a possible attack from the air. This small ant will form the first line of defense in the event of a wasp attack and stop the ant carrying it from falling prey to the bee. The small ant both uses a very clever defensive tactic and also endangers its own life for the ant carrying it. This is clearly an example of great cooperation. Ants organize themselves in a flawless manner. Yet they have no hierarchy among them, and no ant organizes the colony. Despite that, every ant miraculously knows what it has to do. The distribution of labor was set out before they were born, and ants perform their jobs to perfection. That does not just apply to leafcutter ants, but is to be seen in all species. These features that ants possess once again demonstrate the invalidity of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. It is well known that the theory of evolution claims that all living things came about as a result of blind coincidences. No coincidence, however, could ever endow ants with the features of cooperation, self-sacrifice, discipline, and planning that they possess. No coincidence can make every one out of 500,000 ants work to a single end.
The theory of evolution claims that living things need to be in a permanent state of struggle to the death to survive and regards this as the fundamental mechanism of evolution. However, the theory of evolution can never account for how ant society, built on sacrifice and sharing, could have come about. The theory of evolution also maintains that living things acquired the characteristics they possess in stages, as a result of changes brought about by mutations. But that means that the social order exhibited by ants must have come about by stages, and that is impossible. That is because, as we have seen in this film, an ant colony is made up of ants with different functions. And if even one of those functions failed to be carried out, that would spell the end of the colony. Let us consider the leafcutter ants as an example. If the soldier ants did not defend the nest, if the workers did not cut the leaves, if highways were not built to carry those leaves, if giant walls were not built by a cooperative effort, if the leaves brought to the nest were not cleaned one by one, then none of the other jobs would serve any purpose, and the ants would be unable to grow their fungus. That would mean all the ants in the colony starving to death. The planned way in which the whole system has been set up can be understood more clearly if we look at it in greater detail. For instance, if there were no zinc coating on the blades of the ants that do the cutting, if they were unable to produce the antiseptic liquid to protect the colony from bacteria, if the temperature and humidity in the nest were not carefully regulated, and if all the ants did not behave in a totally disciplined fashion, the other characteristics possessed by the ants would again have no meaning, as they would all die shortly. That is because the colony can only survive if all these things exist together. That shows that ants could not have come by their attributes in stages. In other words, they could not have evolved. On the contrary, ants were created at a single moment together with the perfect structures and many other features that we have been watching. Another proof that ants were created with all their flawless characteristics emerges when we examine the fossil record. The 80 million year old fossil ant you are seeing is one of the oldest ant fossils in the world. The interesting thing about it is that it is no different from present-day ants. This definitely proves that ants suddenly came into being with all their particular characteristics and have undergone no evolution, right down to the present day. In short, ants did not come about by evolution. God created their flawless bodies and the social systems they possess. Let us now think in the light of all the things we have seen in this film and ask a few questions.
How did ants come by all the features they possess? Who set up the division of labor between them? How is it that every ant knows from the moment of its birth what job it has to do? Why are the soldier ants prepared to sacrifice their lives for the sake of the colony? How is it that creatures with no powers of reason can possess a more organized and social society than human beings do? How is it that 500,000 ants can act like a single brain for a common purpose? All these questions point us in the direction of one important truth. What these unreasoning creatures manage to do is clear evidence that God has created them and given them the features they possess. God's might and the art of his creation are to be seen in all living things. Ants are just one of the countless manifestations of God's art of creation in the world. In one verse, God says, Everyone in the heavens and earth belongs to him. All are submissive to him.